It is a far, far better thing that I do than I've ever done. It is a far, far, yeah, far... Yeah, all right, never mind all that. We're running late. Get up here, come on. It took the far so I could do this speech. Yeah, well, I'll cut it. It's boring old Dickens. It's a load of old rubbish. Get up here, come on. <laughs> right, Brian, now all you do is kneel down and put your head in the hole, OK? Yeah. And then we fade out. If yeah. I must. Yeah. Like this? Yeah, that's it, Brian. Very nice. Very nice, yeah. yeah. So this is me big speech. So die all enemies of the revolutioni. Yeah. The end. <laughs> Can I get up now? No, hold it for the fade out. I only hope this has been worthwhile. Of course it is, Brian. You're a big draw, you know, with the middle aged. You've got a lot of pull. Pull! <laughs> <laughs> Do you realise what you've just done, Reggie? Cut his head off! Yeah, you've just executed one of the major figures of the English stage. Ugh. Perhaps we should have got Donald Sinden after all. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on a minute. That's a matter of books. I don't believe it. 
Oh, well, this has put an entirely different light on the matter. <laughs> now, listen, Danny, you're going to show us how to make some pixie draft excluders, aren't you? Oi, yes, oi, Robin. oi, I'm back. Uh, I've changed my mind. Hello, Sammy. It's me, your sexy empty brute, Stinky. Yeah. I'm sorry, Stinky, but I thought you weren't going to be in this scene. Yeah, but I've changed my mind now. I've seen Samantha Fox, haven't I? It's too late, Stinky. Yes, get off, Stinky. This isn't fair. You didn't tell me you booked her. I want to do it now. Well, I'm sorry you can't. Bye, Stinky. Oh! You know, sir, it irritates me. Hey? I said it irritates me. Does it? Yes, it does. But I thought that had cleared up, Irish. Oh, no, 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 not that. What irritates me is the way our rolling goes, yeah. I don't know where it gets it from. It's so irritating. Yeah. Your girlfriend. <laughs> what, with a face like yours? I've got a better idea. What's that? 
You can play the beer, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Reggie, drinks on the house.
Marlene. Yeah, we know that. Tell them about the book, Marlene. Today's cookery lesson comes from page 22 in Darcy our... Darcy Secret of the World's Greatest Chefs. And there are still a few copies left, you lucky people. I thought you said you've got a warehouse full of them. <laughs> Thank you. No one in their right mind would buy one of them. I bought one. Exactly. I rest my case. <laughs> Carry on, Marlene. Ignore the boring hamster. Hello, I'm Maureen. You've said that once. <laughs> in today's cooking lesson, I'm going to show you how to roast a plump, juicy bird. <laughs> Barbaric. I'm not barbecuing it, Errol. I'm roasting it. <coughs> First, you pluck your bird. <coughs> Cause some people prefer them with the feathers left on. <coughs> then you remove the giblets. <coughs> essential to make a rich gravy. <coughs> but of course, you could buy a perfectly adequate instant gravy from your local supermarket. <coughs> Finally, you stuff the bird. <coughs> Came 
course I've heard of the haggis. What a nice little animal. You stuntering wassock. It's not an animal. It's a mean cuss. It's a mean of oatmeal and liver and all that. It's not alive. <laughs> well, that one is, isn't it, <laughs> set in the jungles of Burma, rewritten for BBC Three by Darcy de Passy and the Rodent Drama Workshop. We join the 9th Platoon as exhausted and beaten after days of travelling, they finally reach the bridge. Come on, men. Keep up. We're almost there. Here, Major, I'd give anything for a long, cold drink of water. I'd give anything to run up someone's trouser leg. <laughs> Kevin the gerbil, eh? I'm coming! Call me sir, you ninny. Eh, I'm coming, sir, you ninny. <laughs> now settle on everyone. <laughs> You're on the back of the apron. Quiet up, man. <laughs> As a gallant major, I have led you gallantly through the steaming jungles of Burma. All right. And at last, we've reached our objective. The bridge over the river Kwai. <laughs> Go home. Go home. Ugh, don't be so stupid. This is a dramatic climax of our adventure, isn't it? Now we blow up the bridge. What? What? That bridge? Yeah. Why not? Because, man, it's a very, very busy bridge. Ice yeah. and stains. Yeah. The number sixty-eight bus crosses that bridge. <laughs> don't be ridiculous, mate. We're in the Burma jungle, remember? <laughs> London Transport doesn't operate these jungles. London Transport hardly operates in London. Oh, yeah? What's that, then? Hmm? <laughs> it's a number 68 bus. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Go on, ruin the ambience. Destroy the illusion. Look, this place looks nothing like the Burmese jungle. We haven't got an endless budget, you know. You're not in EastEnders now. I mean, we've got palm trees. What more do you want? And we've got jungle creepy crawlies. What creepy crawlies? Me? I'm not a creepy crawly, I'm a jabbel. Look, I was booked to appear in a multi-million dollar spectacular. Not a low-budget ramshackle half-baked fart with animals. And this thing here. No, just a minute, Jimmy. Jabbels and creepy crawlies, you know. Well, we're a bit crawly, I suppose. <laughs> but we're not creepy. Oh, shut up, Kevin. Listen, I wrote this ramshackle half-baked, I mean, high-quality <laughs> drama. Uh, and this is its climax. So we're not backing down now. I know you died in your last job, but try and put a bit of life into this. Go and blow up that bridge. But how will the folk get to the other side? Don't be daft. Who wants to get to the other side of stains? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it. Good Lord, man, aren't you a highly respected actor? <laughs> I can't go around the countryside blowing up public property. I am the CEO, remember? I've got to give the order to do it, and I'm not going to give it to there. Have you been paid yet? Men, blow that bridge. <laughs> uh, right, we're going to climb under the bridge, lay the charges. You have the explosive ready, all right? Yes, sir. Come on, lads, this is a good bit. Uh... <laughs> Somewhere before. No, I'm not him. He's 
he's dead. I'm someone else. He's a um, scout leader. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I'm a scout leader, yes. and these uh, are my scouts, the Rat Patrol. Yes. We're off hiking, aren't we, lads? Are we? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. Good day, constable. <laughs> Follow me, Rat Patrol. Yeah. Uh, Ta-da, Juliet. <laughs> Come on, scouts. Dib, dib. Hey, come here. <laughs> uh, I thought you were missing to come here. Okay, look, uh, calm down. We fooled him. He's back in his car, isn't he? Uh, here, yeah, Rawlinson. The copper's got the explosive, so you won't be needing this detonator, right? Don't touch that! Get the 
best parts because I'm the best. You get the bit parts because you're a non-entity. <laughs> now, if I'm going to play Bond, where's all the beautiful girls to star alongside me? Too expensive, Roland. Oh, shut up, Kevin. James Bond always has fabulous birds. So who can we get? Um, Glennis? Maureen? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Get on the phone and book Charlotte Rampling. Yes, Roland. Fancy Kev wanting to play James Bond. I agree, Roland. Oh, hello. Who rattled your handlebars? If we're going to have a James Bond, we need someone brave. Yeah. Handsome. Yeah. Welsh. Yeah. What? Welsh? I'm not Welsh. No. Now, this may come as some surprise to you, Roland, but I am. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, what an amazingly brilliant idea, Errol. Yes. Errol 007, British secret hamster, licensed to run around in a little wheel and bore people to death. <laughs> and sorry, Errol, you can be Q instead. Now clear off and invent us a deadly weapon. Yes, Roland. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it marvellous? They all want to be James Bond, but it has to be me, doesn't it? After all, James Bond has got to be calm, poised. Super cool. Bing! <laughs> Play game. Clear off. I got one, Roland. I booked a girl. Here she is. Oh, hello, love. <laughs> Hi. Your friend tells me you're looking for a glamorous actress. Yeah, we are. Uh, still, uh, you'll have to do, yeah. <laughs> Kevin, is this the best you could do? She was the prettiest one I could find, Roland, and she's very well known. Mm, all right. What's your name, love? Leslie Ash. <laughs> That's a strange name, isn't it? <laughs> Good job your first name's not Fag, isn't it? <laughs> get it? Fag Ash. <laughs> uh, you'll never get anywhere with a name like that, you know. You want to change it to something romantic, exotic, exciting. Like Rat. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Okay, Leslie Rat. Yeah. Tell you what, we'll just run through the love scene, okay? Love scene? Yes. Gotta have a love scene in a James Bond film. You mean you're yes. gonna kiss me and hug me and all that? No, 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 no. Of course not. No. No. You are gonna do all that to me. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say to that then, eh, Fagash? <laughs> I just call my agent. No, hang on a minute. No, come on. We gotta get cracking. Lights, action, sound. Yeah. What are you two doing? <laughs> oh, it look like a fool. Where are you, seen? She just found me lips, and now you sport the whole ambiance. We're acting, we're acting. I want that made perfectly clear. I'm <laughs> acting. This is the James Bond love scene, Kevin, so clear off. But there isn't one. What? Of course there is. <laughs> James Bond always has a love scene. Not this time. Leslie plays a Russian spy who beats James Bond up with karate blues and chops and all that sort of thing. <laughs> she can't do that. Yes, I can. You watch this. Hey. Come on, James. Let's get started. What's the matter with her? She's having a turn. Look out. She's going down, Kevin. Thank you so much for organising this mess. Brilliant. I know you want to get it right, Roland. Ha! Yeah, well, I think we'll scrap the sketch for this week. We'll do one next week instead. And it'll have a special part in it for you. Oh, wonderful. What's that, Roland? A hundred and one Dalmatians. And you play the lamppost. <laughs> difficult to mix with other people. Nervous at parties. Perhaps you've even developed a nervous twitch. <laughs> Don't worry anymore, because now there's a solution. Twitch! <laughs> the ferret wee! <laughs>
catches all this bad weather, don't you? Oh, well, I reckon it's that blooming Michael Fish on the telly. No. What does he know about the weather? No, no, no. It's your space probes, Iris. That's what does it. How do you mean? Well, Roll was explaining to me. Yeah? There's this layer around the Earth. Ooh! Sort of seals in your atmosphere. How did they get up there? The seals? <laughs> Not them kind of seals, you fool. Oh. This is a seal in your atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Keeping yeah. things nice and warm. Oh, yes. What, well, like a string vest? <laughs> yeah, sort of. Well, you see, when they shoot the rockets yes. through the layer... What, what, through the string vest? Yeah, they make the holes bigger. I mean, bigger holes than you get in a string vest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they'd have to be to get the rockets yeah. through, yeah. Yeah, well, they'd have to be, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. You see, then, all your decent weather sort of leaks through. Oh, is that right? Well, that's what Roll says. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, it's wonderful to have an intelligent son like Roland, isn't it? Yeah. Mind you, he's not always right, is he? No, no, he's not. He joined the BBC. He was wrong there, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. That was the biggest mistake he ever made, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Men who 
don't mind at all if the, the Farsi account is slightly in the red at the moment. Get on with it! <laughs> so, Roland Scrooge retired to his bedchamber. But then, something strange began to happen. Excuse me, Mr. Rat. Could I have a word with you before hey? we take this a step further? What's the matter? It's too late to argue about your money now. Yes, but it, it's this fir tree on my head. Yes, well, we couldn't get any holly, so you'll have to make do with that. Anyway, Christmas trees are part of Christmas, aren't they? Like bells and carols and snow. Snow! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, it's snowing indoors today. <laughs> I was uh, told this was Dickens, not Scott of the Antarctic. We've rewritten it, yeah, giving it a bit of style. So come on now, you're the ghost of Christmas present, so haunt me. Go on, wail. Oh, very well, Roland. I'll do my best. Oh, oh. <laughs> Just a minute, I'm in the middle of wailing.
grateful lot you can keep your poverty. Last time I try and be generous, I'm off back to count me money. <laughs> Our Christmas carol is ended. Our Christmas play is done. Old Scrooge's ways has mended. He's nice to everyone. God rest ye merry gentlemen. Make the most of it, I say. Because I'll be even meaner when we get to Boxing Day. Yeah. yeah.